sensitivity and hurdle rate target developer margin is the same as yield on cost it is used in calculating residual land value so if you put in 15 percent the residual land value is calculated keeping in mind that you want to make 15 percent on the cost so it's very simple uh, cost sensitivity and sales sensitivity they relate to on the summary page we've got these uh, sensitivity tables where you know you, based on your normal assumption this is what you make but what happens if the sales go up by five percent um, or they go down by five percent and the same thing is happening here with the cost what happens if the costs go up by five percent or go down by ten percent and five percent so whatever increment that you put in or increment or decrement that you put in here that's the value it is increased by and decreases by uh, in the sensitivity table so residential develop and sell RDNS, we just call it uh, it's a short. So that basically assumes that whatever you are developing, it's a residential building and in the end you will sell it. Uh, commercial develop and sell, it basically means that you are developing a commercial building and whatever you are developing at the end, you will sell it. So we quickly ascertain the values of these, um, uh, these properties based on the assumptions that you select here. And in here you've got sales commission. So when you are, so this is basically when you sell it, that's the commission that you would need to pay. So this is, has nothing to do with you buying the property. This is this only has to do with when you are selling the developed unit or develop single family home that you have, that's where it'll go. So sales value calculation. So MV per unit, that basically means market value per unit. So if you can, you can do that or you can go market value per, per NSA, which is net saleable area. So sometimes uh, you have an area where the going rate is $500 per square feet or $500 per square meter for the, for the end selling price. Uh, so to calculate that, if you have those values of what you are building uh, based on the square feet or the square meter uh, area, you could select which option that you would wanna use. The same with construction costs, you can have uh, the values quickly enter, let's say you know that in this area, a single family home costs 400,000 to build, uh, or a, a townhouse costs 450,000 to build. And uh, you could say, hey, okay, I can go with cost per unit, or again, I can go with cost per unit of measurement, which basically means uh, a square foot or a square meter, right, that you've got. That's the contingency that you allow for all construction costs. So whatever construction costs that you allow for later on, that's the contingency that you can add on top of it um, same with commercial so you've got sales commission at closing so when you sell it that's what it will be now because we use because the value of a commercial property is based on the rent it actually brings in the method here is that we put in a vacancy rate we put in operating expense or you know effective gross revenue um, and then we have an exit cap rate that we put in here and then you've got construction cost calculation again the same way whichever way you want to go to or you've got another construction contingency here. So you add all these values and based on these settings, everything, every other module that you use here um, will be affected. So once you've done that, once you entered some values, let's say we change that to 1.2 million. Um, we've already selected there is GST, so 10%. Now, if there is GST on it, I'll check that off. If not, I'll check it off. I'll leave that on. Um, uh, closing cost uh, as a percentage of land value. Now, if I wanna go with as a percentage of land value, I'll enter the percentage here. Uh, whether or not it includes GST, I will check that off as well. But if I wanna go, hey, I know what this value is. Um, my closing costs are gonna be, let's say $1,500 or $5,000. So you can either have either or. So you have to have one of them as zero. So the other one is zero, then it's fine. Then you enter a value. So that's how the land portion works. And quickly, if I just press the save and refresh button, it'll save and refresh. Uh, it'll take a few seconds and you'll see that all these logos start blinking once. Once they blink, that means it's about to close and it stopped and you go into the summary sheet and you can go back and say, hey, what have you got? Uh, the values that you have and so on. So everything that you've got here, uh, they're all based on the assumptions that we have made. We'll do a full, uh, full feasibility and things like that um, uh, later on, but this is to show you how everything comes together.